Pandora's always been a lawless place, but what if we wanted to bring some order to this wasteland of a planet? Today we ask, can you beat Borderlands 2 as a sheriff's posse? To start, let me tell you what exactly this challenge is. First off the basic rules, we will attempt to beat the game at Overpower 10 Ultimate Vault Hunter mode. To the new Borderlands recruits, that pretty much just means the hardest difficulty and everything is 10 levels higher than us. Also, Bar will not be allowed during this run. On to the fun stuff. I will play as the Sheriff and the others will be my deputies. The challenge is mostly centered around these badges, therefore I will be running Jacob's pistols while the deputies run Jacob's shotguns. The badges also provide us with a little extra fight for your lifetime based on how many deputy badges are equipped on the team. So I get an extra 60% while everyone else got an extra 30. And for the real kicker, if at any point the sheriff dies, that's me, I must save quit and reset the map. This means my survival is of the utmost importance. Last thing before we get started, I'll show you all the rest of the gear and builds. We all have a basic shield and low level grenade mod just for slagging purposes, and in the comm slot I will be running the legendary titan for tankiness, and the deputies will be running the legendary gunzerker comms for some DPS and longer gunzerk duration. Here are the builds so that all the sal mains can go make me cry in the comment section. For the deputies, I pretty much gave them an AI generated deputy sal build. They all have two shotguns out instead of the usual grog and lady fist in the main hand, so I had to change some stuff to compensate for that. As for the sheriff build, I decided to suffer a bit and not give myself too much DPS, but on the other hand, I have the most deadly seal combo in the game. That's right baby, we're bringing the stinky back. I put the stinky on him. Okay now with all that out of the way, let's introduce the posse. With my trained deputies, wait, you guys are trained, right? Uh, raise your hand if you played Deputy Sal before. Okay, raise your hand if you've ever played Sal before. Oh god, what did I get myself into? Anyway, we started clearing out Tutorial Town and found that six shotguns all going off at once not only drops me to what I'm guessing was 30 frames per second, but it's also pretty funny to listen to. Oh my god, hearing all the Jacob shotguns go off, dude. Not too many issues came up here, and honestly, we kind of rolled the place. Anyway, we saved Hamulock and set off to take on Boom Boom. Along the way, we discovered that the accuracy and range of the shotguns was going to be the deputy's biggest challenge. Well, besides making sure my clumsy butt doesn't fall off a cliff or something, of course. I had a feeling that this would be an issue, so I made sure to give everyone 5 an insight and bust that can't slow down so that we could get into the enemy's faces quickly and also rush to each other's aid in case we went down. Mix that with the fact that our bleed out timer is super long because of our badges and the fact that you can fire your left gun while reviving, you get a strat that just might get us through this game. The plan for Boom Boom was to let me take the cheese bowl fight with my lower DPS while my deputies handled the other boom. They did a great job, but on my end, I was having some trouble. Luckily, Deputy Lucas came in and helped kick Boom Boom out of his turret. I didn't have much ammo to help with this fight, so I decided to promote myself to Medic Sheriff Gas Mask and just help that way. I started to run back so I could top off my pistols, and the lads accidentally let all of the outlaws out by blowing up the gate, so I made the call to go in and risk it for my homies like they would for me. This time around, I knew I couldn't revive everyone in time, so I made sure to psych everything I could so that they had a chance to get themselves up, earning me another promotion to support Medic Sheriff Gas Mask. Anyway, we dealt with the very thrusty bad guys, and we all made it out of this Fandango alive. And then Queen Knight did the bleed out any percent speed on an accident while trying to save me, so that was hella depressing. Oh, this is a perfect time to point out that the death counter will only count my deaths. If you need an explanation on why, just go check out our other co-op challenge. I'm sure that will clear everything up for you. Anyway, after many, many armpit moistening battles and stinky plays, we made it to Flint. Initial results show that this fight was going to be super tough. After a lot of really scary close calls, we retreated and went to make a game plan. We decided that we should just go in and milk the fight for your life timer and just spam shotguns at ankle biting range while I would try and stay back and deal damage from a distance. I really didn't want to cheese Flint by punching him off his arena again. Flint, however, 
never forgot that day, and he came for his revenge. Oh my Why god! Oh my god! Oh my no! God. No! no. <laughs> that was pretty scary, honestly. Anyway, you probably want to see Flint die, so here's the clip of that. Black of me, when I get gas locked. Oh my god, who's resing me? Yo, yo. Oh, he was getting real close, though. Oh! Yeah. Whoa, oh, we did it. did it! Okay. Pretty wacky, right? Nah, for real, though. As soon as I fell off, the deputies all grouped up and did some kind of triangle attack and milked their fight for your lifetimers like we had planned. This fight provided me with another promotion to useless support medic gas mask. Whoa, wait. Whoa, wait, that doesn't sound... Anyway, we hopped on a boat and found ourselves in Three Horns, where I got my real promotion of Support Medic Sheriff Gas Mask, the Bully Mong Whisperer. Oh, sorry. Uh, darn it. Amanda's Need to go in for it? I know. <laughs> Ow. He may be short a few chromosomes, but he's a savant hey. when it comes to vehicles. He's locked the station to prevent the bandits from... Lucas confiscated the keys to a car, and I decided to doll it up with some Jacobs logos. In order to get into Sanctuary, we had to help Corporal Reese and get a new power core for the shield generator. I have like almost no knowledge on the ranking system, so I don't know if him being a corporal means he was higher or lower rank than a sheriff, but all I knew was that the rules only cared if I died. Superior or not, I still made sure to tell the deputies to kill the 20 bandits to avenge him like we always do. Anyway, after not being able to afford the best gun in the game and forgetting everything that happened at Sanctuary, we went to Frostburn Canyon. I usually speed run to the end of this place, but this time I got to do it with the homies. I decided not to play it safe and go for the spike jump skip since my deputies have been really good at not letting me die so far. Let's see if they can save me from a cliff, am I right? Anyway, fun fact, still never miss this jump and I'm going to keep attempting it until I do. So we found Lilith and started fighting off the psychos with her. I couldn't kill a single bandit here. But then Tom recommended that I try killing two instead and everything started to work out. So since we're in- Oh my god, Lilith, shut the- Wait, wait, actually, Lilith, th this is the perfect time to use that one-liner. Holy crap, okay. Okay, Lilith, we'll let you slide on that one. Back to what I was saying. Since we're in co-op, enemies have a lot more health, and in some instances, spawns are a lot different. If some of you guys remember the friendship run, you might remember we had to take on 12 big psychos as opposed to the usual three that spawn due to four player co-op scaling. If that doesn't ring a bell, you're probably new and should subscribe and check out the rest of my channel for some good laughs. Anyway, why slowly whittle down a bunch of health bars when you could just put the stinky on them? Big guys were a bit tougher, but they're definitely Not sure why I said that or even what it means, but I think it's safe to blame some sort of insanity. Yeah, so I ended up dying and restarting this whole fight twice because I got counter stinkied. And yes, I did do the spike skip again both times. Honestly, I didn't mind though because I got this crazy stinky clip. Oh, Lilith! No! <laughs> Lilith was saved and now it was time to rescue Roland. We needed to get a new car to fool the bloodshots, but then I realized that cowboys don't use cars, they use horses, and since we didn't have any of those, we had to fight the bandit technicals on foot. These darned horseless carriages ended up destroying Deputy Lucas early on, but after we got rid of the big one, we destroyed all the cars we needed, and then another car came up and ran me over. Joke's on them though, they just saved me a trip of running through the dust. <laughs> up next was the bad moth fight, and we came prepared with a plan. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> yes! <laughs> the only problem with this strat is that Badma kinda took the key we need with him, so we had to re-enter the map to get the key to show up somewhere reachable. It was now time to fight through the Bloodshot Dam, or as I like to call it, 
Cowardsville. Using our finely tuned coordination skills, we were able to combat the cowardice of these guys by simply punching them closer to homies that needed revives. I feel like there are a lot more enemies in here than usual, probably because of the 4 player co-op scaling and whatnot, but we were keeping each other alive. Mad Mike and his toilet room were the last things I was worried about here, but there was nothing a little teamwork couldn't handle. He's standing by the fence, can you do Combo? something here? Combo? No. Oh! <laughs> Somehow we turned one of the worst mobbing sections in the game into a really fun fight by putting the stinky on so many bandits. It's stinky. Lucas even styled on Mad Mike in the end. He's looking at me. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I got him. Oh, you got him, let's go. <laughs> After that, we just had to run to Roland and then get stressed out about this toaster we had to fight. I'm willing to bet that some of you guys don't know that the Warden can actually take Roland to the Hyperion Friendship Gulag if you take too long to rescue him. If you didn't know, don't feel bad. That just means you're good at the game. Anyway, I wasn't sure if dying and the resulting save quit would cause us to automatically go to the gulag, so I had even more distress about than usual. So running through the dam was pretty scary. We all went down a few times, and there were very few spots where we were actually safe. Deputies Tom and Queenite made it there before Lucas and I, and then I noticed that the warden was already spawned, and the clock was already ticking. I ordered them to rush in and await our backup. Moments later, I made it to the fight and single-handedly saved everyone from the big, bad, scary toaster with no help from Tom whatsoever. No gulag for us, baby. Anyway, after clearing out all the loaders and saving Roland, our next job was to meet Tina and Mordo and help them with a good old-fashioned train robbery. That might sound like we're breaking the law, but I'm the sheriff, and I make the rules, and I say it's legal. Anyway, after roasting up some critters, we confiscated some TNT from the local bandits, and we blew up the train in a safe and controlled manner. It was the end of the line, and Wilhelm wasn't going down without a fight. A long, cursed fight. The plan was simple. Loaders were going to be our priority one enemies until Wilhelm ran out of troops. Priority two for the deputies was going after Wilhelm himself, since they had all of our DPS. While priority two for me was dealing with the surveyors, since I had the accuracy to deal with them better. We were able to put the stinky on some of the loaders, but a couple of stinky proof big loaders really drained all our ammo and grenades. And then, something extremely cursed happened. Something I could only imagine would come from my worst nightmares. Something so unheard of and absurd that I still don't believe it happened, even though I see it with my own two eyes. This was the incident. What? There's a badass constructor. Constructor? <laughs> Why is it so small? There's two of them. What is going on? Hi. Yeah, bro. Every time I think back to this fight, I genuinely feel like it's a fabricated memory. Like, even watching the footage right now, while editing, I feel like Ashton Kutcher is just gonna walk around the corner and tell me I got punked or something. Like, I still don't believe this happened. The fight was hard and I had to really focus so that I didn't die, but like it only took 8 minutes to kill Wilhelm. I've had runs where I'm getting bodied by him for hours and I have never seen these cursed baby turret toaster crossbred abominations in my life. The game really seen this and was like, oh okay let me help you out with that. I don't know if this is another co-op spawn thing going on or whatever, but what really has me baffled is that even with no ammo, and my mental state so shattered by what my eyes were perceiving, we actually survived the whole fight. What the fuck is even going on right now? Who am I? How am I? Baby constructors aren't <laughs> real, they can't hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> After I save quit to make sure I didn't have any mods running, we made it back to Sanctuary and never mind, it's flying now. That's a problem. So we had to go through the fridge and try not to get ambushed by all the lowlifes dwelling there. Big emphasis on try here because I ended up dying. Deputy Tom was at the end of the map ready to travel, but we all went down and hitting rats in general is just not easy. So here was where I had my first bleed out death. And honestly, I'm pretty proud of my deputies for lasting this long. Well, except for Lucas, because this rat picked my pockets twice and Lucas tried to snatch Yoink. up all the money when he died, and I didn't appreciate that. 
On the way to the beacon, Alyssa challenged the bridge to a duel and she was all like, draw! And then the bridge drew, but not in the fun cowboy way. So we all had to take the elevator thing. Well, this one goes sideways, so maybe we call it a horizontal. Editor, don't take that joke out of the script. Also, don't record yourself reading this. This isn't part of the script. Oh, come on, not again. Anyway, there were some close calls fighting the loaders before the gluttonous thresher fight, and that fight didn't go too well either. The deputies barely killed it before I bled out, so resetting the map did not mean we had to do the fight over, so that was nice at least. Also, I'm a bozo and miss this death, so add one to whatever you see from here on out. Jumping over to Overlook, we set up the beacon and stood ready for the waves of floaters coming our way. And by ready, I mean I was buying ammo right as they were dropping in. I was kinda hoping the game would realize we seen two more toasters than we should have so far and that they wouldn't send in more, but surprise surprise, hope is useless when it comes to gas mask challenge runs. This was a tough fight. Other than Lucas redeeming himself after the whole fridge fiasco, we were getting real close to losing. We tried our best to keep the beacon alive, but it got destroyed 8 times and just became invincible, which is good for our progress, but harsh on our pride. Also harsh on our pride was the escape we had to pull off. Usually you can teleport away as soon as you choose a location, but in co-op there's this 5 second timer, and if one of you guys go down, it's just like, no, and makes you stay there in pain. After the 6th attempt at escaping, we made it to the dust. Yep, I was like literally anywhere but here please. Up next was the dreaded preserve. This is a big map, which means a death would make us lose a lot of progress and make us do a lot of the mobbing over again. I also made it a rule that we had to take out the loot homies in a 4v4 in order to progress, just to make it a little bit more challenging. Our first obstacle of wounding loaders was pretty easy since we could all focus on different baddies. We all probably went down like a dozen times at this little dock area, but we managed to set each other up with revives really well actually. Pomon and Toomba showed up after that to torture us, and attempts to kill them proved to be useless, so we decided that those guys were not our problem. Instead, we bullied this loot homie we found on the way to the other loot homies. The primary mobbing section here was chaotic. Fighting the stalkers here felt like fighting a Minecraft Enderman with a bow. Shooting won't help you, you're gonna have to whack him with it. Anyway, after dealing with those guys, the ultimate loader was surprisingly easy to take down. And now it was time for the 4v4 with the- Hey, hey yo, queen, wait, wait, we're not ready yet, oh my god. Oh, brother, dude. Okay, so I was afraid that this would happen, so I made sure to grab the feather so that we could respawn near the creature slaughter dome instead of at the very beginning of the map. So that lessened the blow. So after that, we did all the mobbing again, re-killed the loot dudes, got a stalker, participated in a stinky conga line, killed all the mobs again, killed the loot dudes again, got a storm again. Ah, uh, wait, no, that was the first time that happened, right? Anyway, died again. Yeah, so this map really friggin' sucks, dude. Even with all these deaths, I'm pretty sure we're still on record pace for a preserve run. Fourth time was the charm, and we finally had a run that got to Bloodwing, and we needed to make it count. So I fueled up to maximize our chances for survival. The last time the four of us tackled Bloodwing together, she brought a homie of her own in the form of a jet loader loot homie. This time though, she had nobody to back her- Okay now, hold up, wait a minute, let's talk about this. Besides that scary factor, Bloodwing was in for a fight. She thought the sky would be safe, but from my point of view, all the pellets in the air made it look like someone snuck in a conference call to the fight. And it didn't take long before Bloodwing made the mistake of landing, and we took her down. The tubby dropped a legendary gunzerker if anyone was wondering. Also, I have the save files with all the cool gear I found along the run in the description if anyone wants to try this for themselves. Everybody say cheese! After our two and a half hours in the preserve, it was time to recruit Brick to the squad. I wanted to hire a temp deputy to help us out, but homie's helmet did not want to come off for the longest time. It eventually worked and we gave him the orders of punch the purple guys, and that plan was working for the most part. I mean he was punching us and we weren't purple but he was punching the purple guys too so technically following orders. The big guy didn't take being fired too well, but he's the one who was forced into a temp job so his fault. Anyway, after our initiation, we worked together to take the sarcastic slab over to a cliff to do exactly what you would expect us to do with the bad guy in a cliff. Everybody on three. One, two, three. <laughs> Still going. Oh my god, that... Yeah, homie got launched. 
I'm pretty sure multiple of us hit him so that knockback was just amplified and I thought that was pretty cool. I won't go over to the combat here, I'll just show you guys the good parts. <laughs> oh, Brick. Light me up, Brick. What beacon's already gone? Oh, nice one. <laughs> nice. Thank you, thank you. Up next was taking down the Jack Double. Into this part of the run, we straight up turned to assassins. The Double didn't last 10 seconds against us. We took his lunch money, and then we split up to all the kiosks and made it out of opportunity in only 3 minutes and 52 seconds. It was now time for the bunker raid. Right off the bat, I learned that Lucas and Queen Knight were both not Hyperion robots, but buzzards are for some reason because that makes sense. Anyway, Tom used the strat he learned from a very cool and handsome YouTuber to get the constructor to look at the wall, which makes us safe from his rockets. This made it super easy to abuse his crit spot as a squad. The dreaded baby turrets were up next. Luckily, bouncing Betty grenades shoot bullets, which do hit these guys. For anyone new to the game or the channel, these guys are glitched and straight up don't take any splash damage at all. On top of that, they don't have a crit spot and they also have an ungodly amount of health regen, so these guys can be pretty annoying. This time around, however, we kinda lucked out. The third obstacle in our way was the big toaster. The useful strat of just standing behind the thing wasn't working as good as it usually did. The deputies were dying and having trouble making it back up the mountain. I also had to scale the mountain again due to personal reasons. He's looking at the stick. Oh, oh, oh. He almost oh, he did die, though. I gotta finish the job. Sorry, guys. <laughs> well. Okay, I'm coming back up. After about 10 minutes of struggling, we managed to all meet up and finally took it down. The final obstacle before the bunker was Face McShooty, who volunteered for death via firing squad. While we sit here and spam at him, I guess I'll give you a cool history lesson. Did you know that in old timey firing squads, only one person in the firing squad would have an actual bullet? They did this so that the men in the firing squad could find some solace in the fact that the rifle they fired likely had a blank in it and not an actual bullet inside. We however did not do any of that goofy stuff because we weren't even sure we could land a hit on him from this far. Oh look, we got him, that was so fast. The bunker fight was upon us, and I definitely didn't die to something embarrassing again like a cliff. Anyway, we took out the turrets, the actual bunker fight started, and the first thing it did was try to assert its dominance with a friggin' T-pose. But it kinda backfired, cause it just made it way easier to hit for all the deputies. So yeah, homie just started T-posing, and kinda kept T-posing every time he flew up to us. We were all capable of hitting the broad side of a bunker, so this fight was actually pretty simple. Jack was hiding something in this mountain, and we were gonna get to the bottom of this. Up next was the Angel Core, and I was dreading this place. Even if you destroy one or two of the injectors, save quitting will reset the whole fight, so you have to do everything over again. So I was pretty stressed out about this part. I already don't pay these guys to do these runs with me, so I didn't want to make them suffer more than what they already have, you know- Wait, Tom, no, don't leave! Anyway, after giving away my foreskins to persuade Tom to come back, we started the Angel Core fight. We devised an order of operations for which targets we were to prioritize. Ion loaders were at the top of our hit list, mainly because of their cheat bubble. When they bubble, every loader in the area starts running to it like the cowards they are. Lucky for us, Fistful of Hurt is a great counter to this because we can interrupt the process entirely. Up next are Angelic Guards. With no way to dismember these guys, it was important to take the tanky ones out first. And last on the list were gun loaders. One could argue that killing these guys off before the Angelic Guards would be better since you could get incoming damage off the table faster, but in reality, these guys were just our revive fodder for emergencies. War and Super Loaders are arguably less dangerous than the rest of these guys because of their big charge up duration and lack of mobility, and the turrets were usually the first thing taken out while the rest of the wave was still digi-structing in. Our coordination was kinda at its peak in here. We were saving each other, setting up slag, and- Oh my god, Lilith. Oh, god. You had one chance, and you overdid it. I'm never letting you slide again. You know what? Fuck you. Frickin' howdy boys, good. Anyway, we made it through Angel Court and tried to kill Jack in the cutscene to save Roland. Don't think it helped at all though, and we're pretty sure all we did was slag Roland, so uh... Whoops. The next day I came down with a cold, so my voice was pretty bad. 
Even though I took proper precaution by taking my cold medicine and drinking my tea, I wasn't going to be able to give out orders to my deputies. Which really, really, really didn't matter because they all know how to play the game and know what they're doing. Our next stop was Sawtooth Cauldron. There was a scary part where we had to fight off a few big nomads, but luckily they came with instructions, so we knew exactly what to do. The rest of the instructions weren't that clear, like Boombringer? I hardly know her. For real though, this part was really scary. The first time we got up here we had to bail, and the second time I was deep behind enemy lines when deputies Queen Knight and Lucas kicked the bucket. I thought it was done for, but Deputy Tom finally managed to land the grenade jump with his across the planet 600 ping. Oh, did I forget to mention that Tom is practically playing in the past and the future simultaneously? Rubber banding never knowing what is real? Because that's what he has been putting up with for the whole run. Tom, when you watch this, thank you. Anyway, my hero arrived and we made it back to the elevator. Up top, we were the most coordinated that we ever were. Got Alyssa. Yep. Um, sure about that? I thought I was reviving oh. Alyssa. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Whoa, 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 wait, wait a minute. That was the wrong clip. Hold on. I got you. Jump on, jump on, Lucas. Thank you. Hold on, is there a bandit to put the stink? Hold on, I want to put the stinky on him with Lucas on my head. <laughs> yes. Can I punch him? Yes! Yes! <laughs> 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 Buzzards were actually pretty easy to take down because our nades stuck to them, so let's talk about the boneyard. I wanted to split up and hit all the pumping stations quick, but this one station has nothing but sergeant and ion loaders, so I wasn't about to go in alone. Glad I wasn't stubborn here because I definitely would have died instantly without my deputies. After barely escaping that with our lives, the rest of the boneyard went smoothly. We made it to the Badlands and decided that we weren't even going to bother with Saturn. Deputies Lucas and Queen Knight went with me to grenade jump into the info stockade while Tom hit the elevator checkpoint near Saturn for us. With our coordination, we were quickly in and out and finally on our way to the vault. After some quick mobbing at the claptrap door, I decided that I was just going to speed run Heroes Pass. Well, minus the speed and the running part. Finally at the vault, we said screw the elevator, we want to fight Jack now. We dropped his shield pretty quickly, but that was but a small fraction of this fight. Not only was his health tanky because of 4 player difficulty, but this time around he kept teleporting away and spawning a bunch of these shield surveyors. Now this doesn't sound like that big of an issue, but Jack's health regen is kinda busted, so if he is suddenly invincible and on the other side of the map, it gives him plenty of time to get his health back. Even though we were doing significant damage, the fight still took about 15 minutes just because the absurd amount of coward strats Jack was pulling off. For reference, here's a clip of us dealing about half of his health in roughly 10 seconds, just to show how bad his health regen is along with the coward strats. Anyway, we eventually took him down, and the warrior fight was up next. Let me tell you our detailed plan to make sure we got through this fight. Step 1. Shoot the warrior. Step 2. Until it dies. The warrior can be a pretty tough fight with its massive flame attack range and massive tail slams. Luckily, with all the defense stats I've built up though, I was handling the attacks pretty well. During the fight, we also managed to screw up so badly that one of the crystalisks became invincible. Crystalisk? More like crystal less, am I right? Anyway, it wasn't too long before the warrior couldn't fight any longer. And with it defeated, we now know. You can beat. Borderlands 2 as a sheriff's posse. Hey, hold up, hold up, don't go yet. It's bonus content time, guys. Jack and the warrior might be dead, but there's still one threat to our lawful land that needs to be handled. I'm talking about the imposter who calls herself the Sheriff of Lynchwood. That's right, this town isn't big enough for the five of us, so she had to go. We can make room for Deputy Winger though, he's cool. In order to get her attention, we were going to need to rob a bank and blow up a train. We managed to blow the train up pretty quickly, probably because we already had practice blowing one up earlier, and I still say blowing them up is legal. This was our first time robbing a bank though, so we were dropping the ball on this mission. 
Tom put the Stinky on Mad Dog, which was pretty cool, not gonna lie. But the problem with that is that Mad Dog had the explosives we needed to blow open the bank door. So after reloading and killing him the boring way, we robbed the bank and set off to go hide the cash. Nisha's posse was playing totally unfair and hogging all the horses, so we were getting absolutely devastated during this part. These guys added three deaths to the counter with their horse strats, but the Nisha fight was up next, and she was no match for our homie strats. Before we go, I just wanted to say thank you so much for making it this far into the video. If you want to support the channel, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps with YouTube's algorithm, which helps the channel grow. I also read all my comments and love hearing your guys' challenge ideas and kind words, so definitely let me know what you thought about this video or what your favorite part was. If you want to support the channel more directly, consider becoming a channel member. 99 cents gets you videos a day early and also supports me so I can get videos out faster for everyone. I'll have my Discord and Twitch where I stream these runs live linked in the description, along with the socials of our homie Mango Soda, who created this video's dope thumbnail. He also does commissions, so if you like his style, definitely go check him out. But until next time, breathe easy, homies.